You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever wanted more positivity in your life, especially during these interesting times, then do we have the Positive You Hypnosis Show for you. Today I'll be talking with Dr. Steve G. Jones, author of at least 25 books and over 9,000 hypnosis audio recordings. He works extensively with Hollywood actors, writers, directors, and producers, helping them achieve their very best. And he's the creator of a fantastic program on positivity Jessica and I have just blissed out to, A New Positive Attitude. And that's just what I want to talk with him about today, about how hypnosis can bring a new positive attitude, more happiness, and even unlimited wealth into our lives. That plus we'll talk about a fear of bedwetting, smelly feet, a fear of birds, nail bitings and roaches, and what a fear of clowns has to do with anything. So welcome to the show, Dr. Steve. Are you ready to shine? Michael, I am. Well, thank you so much for being here and a mighty woohoo! There we go. So before we dive right into things, what was it like being on Millionaire Matchmaker? Well, I've been on three times as a millionaire and a hypnotherapist, and it was actually very interesting and a fair amount of fun. You know, first time I was on as a therapist uh, helping out. The second time I was on as someone they were fixing up. I was on as the millionaire and the hypnotherapist. They were fixing me up with someone. And the third time I was on when they were going to match match the guys up with uh, uh, Sonia, one of the real housewives, I think, of New Jersey. Um, so all three times for their different reasons were, were absolutely fascinating and interesting and fun. Which was most interesting? Probably the second one where it was all about uh, setting me up with someone and, and not setting me up with one of the real housewives, not having me work on someone, just focusing on helping me. I found that very, very insightful, actually. Patty is now a friend and she's a business partner and uh, a good person. And I think it did a lot of good. I got to watch that episode, and it seemed very uh, insightful into your life or a real healing experience. Both, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of insights into my life because you can look at your life and say, okay, there's my life. But when you have an expert looking at it, like Patty, a relationship expert, it looks completely different. You see things that you didn't see before. I love that because they get to look at your blind spots, the thing that you, you, you know what you know very, very well, but you still can't see where the, where the, uh, the mirrors don't reach. Exactly. And that's, that's where you have to humble yourself a lot. You have to open, you have to be open to it and you have to leave your ego at the door and then you make progress. And that's what happened with me. Awesome. Awesome. If you don't mind me asking, if you do, I strike it from the record. Have you been able to really get in touch with your daughter? Uh, well, daughter is an interesting term because I we adopted a uh, – there was a, a mother who couldn't raise her child, and we were both in the church, I, Church of Christ. I was a preacher in the Church of Christ, so we used – uh, an attorney to reach out to a single mother who had had a child out of wedlock within the Church of Christ, and yeah. um, we adopted her. Uh, I was her father for uh, several years, and then after I left, the new new guy came in and adopted her. So, just you know, when we say my daughter, I just want to clarify some things that I couldn't clarify on the show um, because of time constraints. But I did reach out to her. And I did hear back from her, and then I reached out to her again and haven't heard back since. I, I don't want to seem like a pain, so, you know, it's an open door if she wants to walk through it. And, and it sounds like from a karma perspective, a healing experience, you stepped through that doorway. There you go. Absolutely, yeah. So let's go from there. I want to dive back all the way to high school, or when was the first time that you got interested or experienced hypnosis? Well, I was in high school. I was in Riverside Military Academy in Gainesville, Georgia. You know, people's parents threaten them, send them to military school or boarding school, and mine actually did. So beware of that, kids. If any kids listening, your parents might actually follow through. So there I was in Riverside Military Academy in 10th grade. I went from 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Didn't like it, didn't want to be there, looking for any escape I could find. I found that escape in a book called The Complete Guide to Hypnosis by a mm -hmm. PhD psychologist named Leslie LeCron. 
He's no longer with us, but he was a good guy. I wrote a little paperback book, The Complete Guide to Hypnosis. That started me off. Started hypnotizing my roommates. You know, kids came to me wanting to learn learn better and, 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 and run faster. You know, the smart kids came to me wanting to learn more efficiently. The athletes came to me wanting to exercise more efficiently. So all these years later, it's the same thing, except now the uh, smart kids are NASA and the athletes are the Dodgers. Were, were you at the time, were you doing it uh, the same way? And I, I had the, the opportunity to listen to a, a few of your beautiful recordings where you were just talking people back or my, my experience with early hypnosis books was literally the watch of the watch <laughs> going back and forth. Well, I, I didn't do that. I had a bunk bed there in Riverside Military Academy. I was in, I was at a, at a bottom bunk, so it was perfect. So I'd have my, my clients come in, which were, you know, fellow cadets, kids like me in high school, mm -hmm. and they'd, uh, they'd want to work on something. It, it started off as just me having fun and, and exploring this th hypnosis thing, but eventually kids started finding out. And so they wanted to be hypnotized. So I'd have my little office set up in my bunk bed. They'd lie down. And I would just have them close their eyes and count backwards and imagine relaxing scenery. Didn't have to use a uh, pocket watch. I don't think uh, Dr. LeCrone mentioned that in his book, The Pocket Watch, or at least I don't recall that part. So, and, and I can't speak specific to his book. I, I just remember diving in early on and reading about this stuff, thought it was so cool, but the idea of going out and hypnotizing others, it, it wasn't my path, it didn't occur to me. <laughs> what what got you, I think maybe it was probably, we already heard this, this long line of kids. What really got you hooked on it though? Well, it worked. I mean, I would have, okay, so I started playing around with it at first. And I said, when you hear me say the word pepper, you will have to scratch your nose. Because I just wanted to test it for myself at first before I started actually helping people. I was experimenting with it. And uh, so then we'd sit at their table that night. You know, we had assigned tables. The officers had assigned tables. So if I hypnotized an officer and told him, you know, when you hear the word pepper, you'll have to scratch your nose. Then I could sit at his table in the mess hall where we ate that night. I told everyone how I programmed him. So we're all saying, pass the pepper, pass the pepper. He's passing the pepper to a variety of people, but scratching his nose each time. So I thought, I'm on to <laughs> something here. I told him that when he hears the word pepper, he'll have to scratch his nose, and it's actually working. That's called a post-hypnotic suggestion, by the way. Eventually, I realized I could use that to make athletic performance better. You know, when you're up on the pitcher's mound, you're in the zone. To make uh, scholastic performance better when you're in the class, you're retaining information. It, it's reminding me, you're just, you're just blowing my mind. I'm remembering back to, I, I don't even remember, it was seventh grade. It was a class that I had read on the beach, somehow weirdly appropriate to now's time. And, and I, was, I was hypnotized or self-hypnotized. I don't even remember what it was to hold an arm in the air for the entire class and not get fatigued. And that showed me, wait a second, there's something to the power of the mind. I should be getting fatigued, but with some message going on, it's working completely differently. Yeah, yeah, I have videos like that on YouTube where I, I do that. Those, those types of physical demonstrations are very helpful in, in proving or demonstrating to people that this is real stuff. The stuff like confidence building and motivation, sometimes that's not measurable, but when you can hold your arm out for 45 minutes without feeling fatigued, that says something to you and those who are fortunate enough to observe that. What is it really saying? It's not so much mind over matter, is it? What, what's really going on? Well, if we realize that the mind and the body are really one, that helps a lot. You know, oftentimes we think, the, oh, the, there might be a mind-body connection. Well, of course there's a mind-body connection because it's the same thing. Our, our brain is inside our body. It's part of the same system. So it naturally follows that it would have control over the entire body. So all we're seeing is the natural functioning and, and the natural connection of the mind and body in action. And we, and we see it in more profound things than that. Even back to the 1950s, they were causing people to stop bleeding using hypnosis. So your brain controls the physiology of your entire body. So on that note, it, it's kind of early in the discussion, but, but I was talking with you off air beforehand and I was calling, I, I, I have a fever here today. I know so many people have been getting sick the last couple of weeks. I'm calling it the political flu, which is too much watching of negativity. Yeah. And, and, and it's bringing our energy level down. Can hypnotizing us or working and getting into more of a positive vein help bring our health back up? Oh, absolutely. I mean, your health is 
controlled to a large part by your thoughts. And this shouldn't seem to be any metaphysical thing at all. This is this is just natural because as we've already established, your brain and body are connected. So if it can stop bleeding, if it can allow you to hold your arm out for 45 minutes without feeling fatigued, it can also regulate the other functions of your body, one of them being the immune system. When we know that the immune system is extremely vulnerable to uh, outside, outside interference, it's also vulnerable to inside interference caused by outside interference. So you take in all these negative things Things, your thoughts start turning negative, and then the, the output from your brain that affects your body is negative. Can you actually do rewiring of the mind so that you're able to, I call it touch and go at the moment, get information if you feel you need, but without it turning into a toxic stew inside of you? Oh, absolutely. I, I think, and it's for different for everyone. You know, for me, I have the, uh, the uh, right now, I have the new Alexa thing where I can ask it to tell me the, the recap of the news. So it gives me in a very succinct, bite-sized portion the, the types of news I want. I want a little bit of financial news. I want a little bit of world news. And, you know, I get that every morning as opposed to watching CNN all day long and the latest breaking news designed to grab you and make you concerned so you, that you'll keep watching. So, yeah, there is a way to take in the information but do it in a healthy way. What is the mechanism going on behind hypnosis? That is, later I want to get into kind of emotional blocks, but, but since we're talking about positivity and, and rewiring in that aspect, what's the mechanism that's going on here? The mechanism that allows you to rewire your thoughts? Yes, to rewire your thoughts or to get into more of a positive state. Well, it's, it's simply, if you are inundated by news of a negative sort, that's going to activate the fight or flight part of you. You know, you're going to constantly be on alert. You're going to think you're under attack somehow, even though most Americans are not. You know, they're just, I mean, even when they hear about things going on overseas or hear about political things, most of those things will not have a direct impact on them in that moment or anytime soon. There are some things that may affect them long term, but in the moment, there's really no threat. So it's the idea of uh, so the idea of rewiring that is, first of all, as you as you alluded to, separating yourself from that constant bombardment of information that's causing you to be on the fight or flight alert all the mm -hmm. time. And then once you've done that, once you've gotten that out of your realm of, of uh, experience and gotten your news in bite-sized chunks that are more digestible, then you're able to start programming yourself as the news would. So you think, okay, what would the news do? Well, the news is trying to heighten my alert so that I'm watching the news, so that I'm dependent on the news and always thinking something's bad, something bad's going to happen. If I don't watch the news, I'll miss it and maybe I'll die or something or something horrible will happen to me. I mean, that's kind of the state they want you in. So you, you get rid of all that, done. Yeah. You get your news in bite-sized chunks, and then you start filling in those gaps where your brain's looking for information. You start filling that in with positive things, you know, these things that we make fun of, like affirmations. Uh, we start hanging around positive people. We start saying positive things to ourselves. We start listening to and reading positive things. Those things at first won't be as sexy as, and as exciting as the news, but they're going to have a much better effect on you and your health. It's something Jessica, my wife, she's the producer of the show and, and myself, what we've been doing is to counterbalance, if we see something that's quote unquote negative, she goes to the uh, to the kitty videos, the cute and fuzzy kitty videos, and goes watching something cat related. I go looking at natural scenery and what can I do of, of having some scene that completely blisses me out somewhere in the world to kind of connect or ground to our natural state. I agree. You know, one, one of the things I like to do is go out in nature, like kind of like you were mentioning, and just see, OK, the mountains are still there. The ocean's mm -hmm. still there. The sky is still there. Uh, I'm still breathing air. Everything's OK in actual reality, not news reality, but actual reality. So I think that's a great practice. And I love that you're saying that because we, we got the opportunity to listen to two of your beautiful meditations or, or hypnosis 
tracks today, one on positive attitude, one on wealth creation. And both of them, I was I was so drawn and, and excited by this. Both of them, you start by connecting us to nature. One, you've got us up on a hillside in this beautiful home, lush rolling hills, fingertips going through the grass. And the next, you've got us down by the wharf where someone's fishing and there's the ocean around. Both times connecting us to a more natural state. There you go. Yeah, that, that part you're mentioning is the induction, right? Inducing hypnosis, using a state that your body can relate to, and your body physiologically reacts as if it's there in that house, in the field, or going down, going off on the dock, walk, walking along and enjoying the beautiful scenery. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's very powerful. We as humans uh, relate to that. We, we like that nature and that grounding. So it's good that you're, you're on to that and doing that all by yourself, too. So and and then throwing ourselves out into nature every chance we get, obviously, with the fever today, probably not my best day with the rain and 33 degrees out to go. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> fa -la 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 -la. Unless but, you go to Florida or something. Well, <laughs> it's ironic you mentioned that as through yesterday, I was supposed to be on vacation in Florida, which uh -oh. got put off because I got sick. Uh oh, well, I'd encourage you to get there. Be well, no, you don't want to fly when you're ill. That's that's not nice to the other people, but you know, I'm it would like be better. mask. I'm like that's just not kind to anybody else. Yeah, that's a good point. It. I can't do it. <laughs> on that note, let's talk about what's going on with here and how hypnosis. One of the big things people listening to the show, and I do lots and lots of coaching. They come to us with subconscious blocks, sort of like law of attraction. I've been saying the mantra and doing it and doing it and journaling and this and that and the other thing, and I can't get past it. And I think this is where hypnosis can help. Absolutely. I mean, I'll be doing an event next month with Joe Vitale, who is in The Secret. We'll be doing it about uh, Ho'oponopono. And My absolute favorite. And we had him on last week, and we were talking about that. Oh, good. I think that's how, that's how we got connected, through Joe, actually. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so in that in that case, you know, you have a lot of people who are interested in being more spiritual and so forth, but the the challenge for them is that that mental block that they have or a series of mental blocks. So you can learn information like Ho'oponopono for example, but still have trouble applying it because you're not able to accept it into your mind as something that will work for you. And so you start to work against it. So hypnosis is very helpful in bridging that gap. So let's, let's take that example in particular, and that's what I've been doing every evening right now, is I've been ho'oponopono either to myself or to others there, where it seems like there's a challenge in the world today, because I figure the more that I can help heal myself, the more that I'm gonna help heal the world as we bring up our, all bring up our vibration. How can we relate ho'oponopono to hypnosis? Well, if we look at the, the essence of ho'oponopono, it's, it's a, it's a very straightforward system. Uh, it's a system that was developed in Hawaii, that's my understanding, and it's uh, just something they, they kind of fall back on to, to help things go smoothly. So the idea with relating Ho'oponopono to hypnosis would just be to program you that, that this actually is going to work and that you should be using it regularly. See, people sometimes hear information, they think, well, I don't know if that'll work for me. You know, that'll work for Joe Vitale because he's in the secret, of course, and he's able to manifest all this stuff, but I don't know if it'll work for me because I'm just me. Well, Joe Vitale was just him before he started believing in himself and applying the things that he learned. So it, it puts you in that state of mind to actually use, believe in, and uh, diligently apply what you've learned. So, and, and Ho'oponopono, for people listening who don't recall what it is, it's just four simple phrases you repeat over and over to yourself. I love you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Thank you. And it can be said in any which order, but just, I love you. Please forgive me. I am sorry. Thank you. How do we use hypnosis? Is it strictly listening? Is it going to a hypnotherapist? Is it listening to a, a recording, and you have unbelievably over 9,000 recordings, what are the ways that we can use hypnosis to help us to actually integrate these things rather than having our subconscious laugh at them more or less? Well, hypnosis actually helps you bypass all of that, where, whereas you might be inclined to laugh at them or you might be inclined to not use them or to think, well, I don't know if this is working. Hypnosis bypasses that critical factor that's thinking, 
wait a minute, there, I don't know if there's data to support this. I don't know if I really logically believe in this. I don't know if I've seen any evidence of this. So that's your critical factor talking. And that's designed to keep you healthy and safe and so forth and to analyze things. The challenge with that is when we get into the unknown, when we get into using technology that we haven't used before and that we have no proof that it'll work for us, that critical factor can stop us dead in our tracks. It can say, wait a minute, don't even do this because it doesn't make sense. So it bypasses that, allows us to accept the information that we're learning and to benefit from it. So for example, let's let's say that we're, because we, we listened to a, a, a beautiful recording of yours on wealth creation. Let's say that we're doing all this, we, we watched The Secret, we watched Joe, we got all excited. We're, we're doing our, our, our um, dream boards, our vision boards. We're doing all of these things out of the secret. And, um, and we just keep hitting a roadblock or we go and we write down how much money we want to create. And, and I love, I think there was something written, it may have been on your website, where you said that people, when they try to generate wealth, they're off, when they come to you for a session, they're often thinking too low. Um, but in our minds, not only are we not thinking too low, but for lack of a better term, our subconscious is going na 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 poo poo to us. Right. That's a technical term, by the way. Yes, it's doing that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So what do we do? We we find out we we've been writing this down. It's not working. Do we grab a recording? Where do we start to say, all right, subconscious, you're not going to win at this, or? Do we even have to take a step back and say, why is my subconscious doing this? Well, I mean, you can. There are different ways to, to get there. Uh, I'm not opposed to mainstream therapy, which is where you would take a step back and say, why is my subconscious mind doing that? And then you would unravel that with a therapist for a while. That, that could take a while. And I'm not, I'm not against that at all. I mean, uh, this, this could take, you know, one year, 10 years stuff like that. So so you can do that. And I think that has definite value. Uh, the way I like to look at change is more like a, like an oil change. You know, you go to Jiffy Lube or something like that, wherever they change oil nowadays. And, uh, you, you know, you're just changing the oil, just changing out those thoughts, as opposed to rebuilding the whole car and, and seeing if you can make it run better and figuring out what each thing does. We're just changing the thoughts. We're just substituting one for the other. So that's, that's the way I like to look at it. So my view of the human mind is that it's very um, programmable. And I was having a discussion last night, in fact, with a PhD psychologist who practices cognitive behavioral therapy. And she was showing, we may work together, so she was showing me a few of her techniques. And that's, I love that stuff too. I love cognitive behavioral therapy because it just gets right to it and reprograms you. Uh, you would probably like it too if you haven't already ex uh, experienced it because it's very logical. Mm -hmm. uh, it, just, it just lays it out and it, it basically challenges you to, to think, okay, is this working for me? Or are the thoughts that I hold in my mind really logical? Do they make any sense? And they probably don't because they're probably things that you just put together that really they're just uh, a lot of fear-based type things. And so that's the way I like to look at it. Uh, we don't have to go back in the past. We don't have to dig around a lot. We just have to look at where we are now and change what we want to change. Thank you. When, when we have um, dreams, particularly when we're having negative dreams, is a lot of that our subconscious things, things in our wiring we have to either address or hop past? What is going on there, do you think? Well, dreams can be a variety of things. I mean, dreams have been studied uh, all the way back to Freud, you know, around the turn of the last century. We had Freud uh, writing books about it and talking about it quite a bit. And then Carl Jung, who is his his uh, student at, who, who took things to more of a metaphysical realm with his archetypes and so forth. Um, we, we have a lot of theoretical knowledge about dreams. I would say to some extent, all of those things are true. Um, dreams can be sim as simple as the last thing you saw on TV and you dream about it. it. may have no other meaning at all except you saw a car commercial, so you dream about that car. It may have no symbolic reference meaning whatsoever. It may just be the thing that was in your head. 
On the other hand, uh, we know from dream interpretation, I studied this in, in college, actually, when I started college at the University of Florida. I took classes on the side taught by a PhD psychologist, April O'Connell, who had written a book about dream interpretation, actually put some of my dreams in her book. This was back in the 80s. Um, and we see that there is a system through which you can learn the language of your subconscious mind. And, and many times it's attempting to communicate with you. So dreams are everything you've heard about dreams. It's all probably true. Um, you have to look at it on a, on a case by case or dream by dream basis. Going from there, well, let's let's double back to positivity. People right now, if they're struggling, if they're listening to the show, and and obviously, like you said, let's get it to bite-sized pieces, or even turn off the tube, turn off the computer for a while, and get get the steam down, get things cooling down. What are some other steps we can do right now to get our mind into more of a positive state? Well, one of the best things I've found is to seek out people who are who are thinking the way that you'd like to think. Um, we tend to gravitate toward people who are like us, but it's kind of like the old saying, don't dress for the job that you have, dress for the job that you'd like to have. So don't hang out with the friends that you think you should hang out with. Hang out with the friends that you think are at the next level or are, are living a life that's you know better than yours somehow. I don't believe there's better or worse in this world, but more effective in the way that you want your life to be more effective. So if you're working on financial stuff, start hanging out with people who are more financially successful. Spiritual stuff, start hanging out with people who you feel are more spiritual than you. I think as humans, since we are social creatures, uh, we do tend, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Same thing for humans. We do tend to be a lot like the people we hang out with, and we have control over that, limiting our exposure to perhaps the negative people in our lives and seeking out those groups where we can find positive people. Our incomes, for example, this is something we can we can look at data-wise, our incomes tend to be the average of our top five friends' incomes. You know, why is that? That's not just coincidence. That's because birds of a feather flock together. And if you're not like them, you will soon become like them in order to stay in rapport with them. If you fail to do so, you will probably fall out of rapport and not be invited to those group meetings anymore because you're you're different. But if you hang around with them, you'll probably become like them and, and they'll pull you toward that. So that's one big thing we can do. We can change who we hang out with. Thank you. I think that's an incredibly important one because if we find people who we commiserate with, rather than who help bring us up at this time, not that they're bad people in the world. In, in fact, there is, to me, there is no such thing as a bad person, but all we're gonna do is get stuck into a state of commiseration. Yeah, misery loves company. And so if you go looking for commiseration, you're going to find it. You're gonna find it all, you know, ah, oh, life sucks, yeah, I agree, ah, oh, it's terrible, oh, this job sucks, yeah, I agree. You know, people talking about, uh, you know, I remember going to, um, something called the Landmark Forum. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's popular. When I lived in California, it's very popular. And, the, it, you know, anything can be anything. Some people say, oh, it's a cult. Some people say it's helpful. I look at it as helpful, but it's like any tool. It can be whatever you want. But I hear people in the bathroom talking about it during the, especially the first day of it during the break, and they'd say, oh, God, this is a cult. We got to get out of here. You know, and then they feed on each other. You know, I'm not interested in hearing that. I want to form my own opinions. So if you want people to commiserate, if you want to say things are terrible, no matter what you're going through, you're going to find a group of people who believe in that. That's going to be easy. Don't do that. Look for the higher good. Here's a crazy question that just came up. It came up to me. How do we not commiserate with our own minds? <laughs> well, uh, let's see. How do we not commiserate with our own minds? You've got to find a way to break that pattern. You know, you're talking about patterns and loops when, when you talk about that. Uh, like the, the TV show Westworld, I think that's really good at showing how people are a lot like robots. They tend to go in their loops, do the same thing every day, same thoughts, run the same show every single day. Um, so you've got to really make a conscious effort to break out of that. Otherwise, it will be this endless loop. And that's what a lot of people are in. And that, what you just mentioned, is the essence of people getting stuck. They're, they're commiserating with their, their own selves. They work as their own feedback loop. You've got to break out of that. You've got to get new input. The way you do that is by associating with people, like I said, who are at a higher level. Not that there's higher or lower in the world, but they're, they're more productive than you are or more successful in a certain area than you are. That's how you're going to break out of the commiseration with yourself. 
I love it. So you have a lot of celebrities that come to you, a lot of people in Hollywood. I'm guessing they have the same range of problems as everybody else. But I'm curious, when they come to you, where do you start with them or how do you help them to even see their own blind spots? Well, it, you know, it's interesting. Um, Amy Cuddy, uh, a PhD psychologist who yeah, teaches we've, it. We've had her on the show. Have too. you really? Oh, awesome. Okay. Presence, Wonder Woman pose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Starfish up and all that. Yeah, she's great. Um, so you've, you've apparently read her book, Presence, and uh, very aware. Can you see behind us there the? Uh, it's it's just out of the. Like... It's just out of the frame. Can't oh, quite so see it. Is, there is a uh, a wooden image or wooden doll that is the same piece that she has on the front of her book. Awesome. In in, in the woohoo pose going on. Good, She's good. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Um, yeah, so Amy Cuddy is a, a good example of that. Now, unfortunately, in this discussion of Amy Cuddy, I lost track of what the question was. Can you, can you repeat that? We were talking about Hollywood celebrities being able to see blind spots and when they come to you. Yes. So as Amy Cuddy, the Ph.D. psychologist who teaches at Harvard and wrote the book uh, Presence, um, she talks about something called the, the imposter syndrome, which is very interesting because – and I was talking about this last night with the other Ph.D. psychologist that I was talking to who's from Colorado um, who's also familiar with Amy's work. And she was telling me about a case with a lady who makes – $800,000 a year doing her job and doesn't feel she's worth it, doesn't feel she's worthy of it. So we see, interestingly enough, people in people who are very high functioning, very successful, who don't feel worthy of having that success. They feel like imposters. And beyond that, they feel like they're the only ones. They feel that they're somehow unusual because they feel like everyone else who's successful probably earned it and probably feels good, whereas they somehow haven't earned it. And someone at any minute is going to find out that they're not worthy of it. So that's a big one. And with actors, when I work with Hollywood actors, a lot of insecurity there. You'd be surprised, but a lot of the reason why people go into acting is because of their insecurities, because they want to reach out, they want to make those connections, and under the guise of a character, they feel more comfortable doing that. But realistically, they're not very confident in many cases, and they begin to feel like imposters. So confidence, to make the answer short, confidence is what I work on with anyone in the first session even highly successful people, and sometimes especially highly successful people. You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com. So it, it, it's, uh, was it Tony Robbins who said, uh, uh, fake it till you make it many years ago. So yep. a lot of people are trying to fake it until they make it, but the confidence challenge just keeps coming with them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Amy talks about that too, because your physiology, you know, with the starfish up, uh, the, the mm -hmm. postures that can make you feel better, um, what your body does, your what your, your body does, your mind tends to then follow along. You know, Tony Robbins uh, in his uh, recordings, he's talked about that too. You know, when you smile, it can make you happy. Well, Amy talks about that also. I think she recommends chewing on a pen or something like that to make yourself smile. Yeah. So, you know, it, and it's, it sounds weird. And I'm sure when Amy was on it, just some of this stuff sounded weird to the audience, but it's actually true. And it's scientifically researched that when you, you know, you just smile you feel happy. When you stand in a power pose, you feel powerful. So when we say fake it till we make it, um, what we're really saying is use something that's been scientifically demonstrated to help you make it. I love it. I've got right, on, right here in front of my camera. You can't see it, of course, but it has on both sides of the camera, it says smile, smile to remind me to get into that positive state because when I get, we have these mirror, mirror neurons if I get into that positive state, it's more likely that my guest is going to have a positive state experience as well. And that's interesting because when we were setting up for, for this interview, you know, beforehand we had to do the setup stuff, I noticed that, wow, I'm dealing with a very positive and very upbeat person. So that really helped me tap into that part of me also. So it's it's working. The, the proof is in the pudding. Woo! <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so from there, let's talk briefly about affirmations and mantras and how that can help us to do some reprogramming or in a sense, would you even call it self-hypnosis as well? Yeah, we would. And, and this is where Amy and I probably diverge a little bit where she's not probably so big on affirmations and I am, um, but that's okay. It's good to have intellectual, you know, discourse and differences and so forth. But um, yeah, along those lines of your physiology determining the way you feel, um, you can also use affirmations in a similar way. So you can tell yourself that you're confident. You can tell yourself that you're motivated. You can tell yourself that you're creative. And this, your subconscious mind doesn't have the ability to to parse that out and say. This is all true, and this part's not true. It, it just kind of accepts things when you program it, when it's over and over, like a kid hearing, oh, you're no good, you're no good, or you're very smart. You know, it doesn't mean that they're either way necessarily, but their mind hears it so much that they become that way. They start tapping into that part of themselves. So uh, what we end up with is someone who's, very positive and it works this and as i said the same way as you know starfish up or putting your hands in your hips i like it one of the things that that i've been i don't know if i would say i've been challenged with but a lot of my coaching clients recently i don't know why it is and they tend to hit it at about the one month point of coaching and we work our way past it but i'm wondering sub if if hypnosis can help with this about one month in they're making great progress and all of a sudden they try to pull out a revolver and deliberately aim it at their foot yep. as they're starting to make good progress. What do you think's going on here? And how does, how does hypnosis help with that? Well, that's something called sabotaging. And we do that when, we, when our internal thermostat says to do it. So we see it measurably with things like weight loss or, mm -hmm. or earning more money because we can measure it. Okay, they were losing weight. Now they're not. Or now they're gaining weight. So we can measure it on data points. Or they were earning more money. Now they're not. Now they're losing money or staying the same. And what happens there is the thermostat gets activated. So if you think about a thermostat in a house... It keeps the temperature just right. You know, you tell it a certain temperature. If it gets above that, it'll cool it off. If it gets below that, it'll warm it up to keep it where you want it to be. And so our brain to the same way. The way our thermostats get set are in our childhood. You know, we learn from our parents and our, so and our surroundings and our friends that we talked about earlier what we should be able to do. You know, the size of the house we should be able to have, the, the amount of happiness we should be allowed to have, the amount of money per year we should be allowed to have, the freedom that we should be allowed to have. We learn all of that in our youth. And unless we take the time to deliberately reprogram that, that's our thermostat. So you start earning more money than, than you think you should have. Well, you're going to sabotage, maybe start gambling or maybe start uh, wasting money. You earn less money than you think you should. And you'll, you'll you know, get a job and start making more money. So you stay in that very narrow band. We do that with relationships. We do that with money. We do that with happiness. We do that with all kinds of uh, abundance categories, abundance of fun and travel and so forth. So... Hypnosis allows us to, to rewire that. That's why I like hypnosis so much. It allows us to tap, uh, get, out, get out of that hypnosis that we're already in. Thank you. On that note, um, what can you tell us about hypnosis and one of the biggest challenges, which is self-love or self-compassion? Yeah, well, when we talk about that, again, the first thing I work with with people is confidence, and that is the self-love and self-compassion part. They've, they've got to love themselves. You know, the greatest love of all is love you give yourself, I believe. Uh, what was it? Whitney Houston said that. So, um, yeah, and that's what everything springs from. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to love yourself. Um, you've got to be open to giving and receiving love. Um, some people who, you know, become codependent or are codependent, they, you know, they want to give, 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 give. They're not really good at receiving and they're not really good at giving to themselves in many cases. So, so yeah, that is really where everything starts with, because if you don't have a good underpinning of confidence in yourself and the, the ability to receive love and feel that you're good enough, then that's when the sabotage type thing, when the, when the thermostat starts getting activated, that's when that really you know, when people maybe shoot both feet instead of just one good point going going through your um one of your programs earlier today i i, I was curious 
do some, I've heard before that a certain percentage of people who are hypnotized, maybe it's only like 10% go full under, and then the rest go to a, a lower level, but are not, are not in this kind of zombie-like walk around state. How, how does that work? And, and what is, um, what are, for instance, your, your hypnosis products doing with people? Well, uh, everyone is suggestible, and mm -hmm. I look at it as it, similar to electrical conductivity. Harvard and Stanford got together and created something called the hypnotic scale of susceptibility, as they call it. I don't like that word. I like suggestibility, but same thing. Mm -hmm. And they found out that everyone can be anyone can be rated on a numeric scale. You can rate your degree of suggestibility. Some people are very suggestible. Some people are not very suggestible. So that's one of the reasons we say listen to the hypnosis recordings for 21 nights. There's nothing magical about 21 nights, but we want to make sure that we have enough exposure for the people who are not as suggestible and the people who are highly suggestible. It's kind of like eating vegetables. A little more is not going to hurt you. It's just going to do, do you some good. So that's, that's the premise uh, that we come from. So we want to have people uh, exposing themselves to that. So, uh, the, so some people are very suggestible, and they will respond right away. Um, some people are what we call somnambulists, which means sleepwalkers, which means they're very suggestible. These might be the people you see at a stage hypnosis show. You know, if, if you go to a stage hypnosis show, you see people talking in a talking to a shoe, thinking it's a phone, or dancing with a broomstick, thinking it's a partner. And so these people are very suggestible, and they're chosen by a suggestibility test. Maybe the hypnotist will say, everybody stick your hands together, and you'll have a hard time pulling them apart. Well, the people who pull them apart, they won't be invited on stage. But the people who do have a hard time pulling them apart, those are very suggestible people. Those are very high on the scale of suggestibility or susceptibility, as Harvard and Stanford would call it. So they're invited up on the stage. Every, but that stage hypnosis, what, I'm, what I work in is clinical hypnotherapy. And so I'm not just a you know, one-shot deal where I'm just going to entertain a group of people, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, get off the stage. I'm going to give a person a recording of the session. They're going to be able to listen to it for that 21 nights. So even the, the, the less suggestible people will be able to respond. And the reason I say it's like electrical conductivity is because every substance on the planet will conduct electricity. Some conduct it very well, like metal. Some conduct it very poorly, like wood. But every substance on this planet will conduct electricity. Similarly, every person on this planet is suggestible. It's just some people need a little more exposure to it. Thank you. That makes sense. Sure. So toward the end, we're going to do a, a, a brief hypnosis before we've got a few wrap up questions before that. And, and one last question before we dive into some wrap up is where does kindness and compassion fit in? Can we cultivate that with hypnosis? Oh, absolutely. And again, it starts with us. We have to be kind and compassionate to, our, kind and compassionate to ourselves. And we've got to realize that that's where everything starts with. But yes, absolutely. You can definitely cultivate that because you can program yourself for anything. So once you have uh, yourself in a hypnotic state, whether listening to a recording of mine or someone else's or doing self-hypnosis or going to a hypnotherapist, once they have you in that hypnotic state, they can program you for anything that you want to work on. And that is definitely one of them, kindness and compassion. Thank you. What are a few of the, the, the craziest things? I was mentioning earlier, smelly feet, fear of birds, and fear of clowns. What are a few of the craziest ones you've worked on? Yeah, well, we have recordings for all those things. Now, the, 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 the stop smelly feet hypnosis recording sounds, you know, what are you going to magically make feet not smell? No, it basically programs you to wash your feet regularly and to change your socks during the day if you need to and, and very common sense things that are going to actually have a measurable effect on how much or little your feet smell. So it's not as if I'm magically getting rid of the bacteria on your feet or anything. Um, same thing with the stop smelly breath. It just says... You know, take better care of yourself, go to the dentist, that type thing. Um, and then the overcome fear of birds, you know, some people are actually afraid of birds. So that gets into more of uh, more of psychological type programming where we're desensitizing the person step by step to overcome that fear. Watching it on a, on a screen, uh, in a movie, and then going into that movie and taking part in that. It's a, a process that psychologists have been using for a long time. So you can desensitize a person step by step. Um some of the weird, some of the stranger things that I think get people's attention are like overcome fear of clowns, overcome fear of frogs, overcome fear of roaches. But 
once we understand that those are legitimate fears for a lot of people, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. A lot of people are afraid of what we call roaches, but are actually palmetto bugs because they fly. Thanks. Yeah, they're, they're about this big and they fly through the air and they could potentially land on you. They're not poisonous. They can't eat you or anything, but they're really scary. Uh, and people don't like them. Uh, we have an overcome fear of snakes recording. Uh, we have a lot of things like that. So these are things that can actually debilitate people's lives. I mean, there are people who live in Florida and other tropical climates like that who are actually afraid to go outside, sometimes afraid to go to their own kitchens at night because they might experience uh, palmetto bugs. So these things, they sound bizarre until you realize, wait a minute, you know, maybe I have some irrational fears too. I shouldn't judge. So these are real fears that, that they, they sound bizarre, but uh, they're actually helping people's lives. The first time I had a palmetto bug come flying at me, I screeched. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just say run the other way. You see a palmetto bug come and just get, get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> what what words of wisdom would you give for parents, for their kids, or how hypnosis can help kids today? Well, I do have a lot of recordings for life stages, you know, age, uh, you know, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. I believe each life stage has its own challenges. Um, so I'd say it's a great thing for kids. Of course, I'd say that because I'm a hypnotherapist. But when you think about it, Think about all the negative things that kids are programmed with, with TV and, you know, with fears from the news that they hear about one way or the other, uh, or, you know, their fellow peers may be attempting to get them to use drugs or to, you know, commit crimes, you know, maybe not in every neighborhood, but, you know, a lot of kids are exposed to that kind of thing. And hypnosis is that, that common sense good for you message that's that's getting to them. So a lot of parents will play my hypnosis recordings in say they you know they have the parents in one room and the kids in different rooms. They'll put my hypnosis recordings in some sort of MP3 player in the hallway and play it for the whole family as they go to sleep because everyone can benefit from more confidence, more motivation, more creativity. So I say the younger the better because you're fighting uh, you're fighting a battle, really. You're dealing with all the negativity of the world that kids are exposed to every day, whether no matter how much you try to protect them. I mean, short of moving to the moon, you're going to have your kids exposed to negativity. So you might as well get on it and start working against that. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> And Jessica and I, we're going to be doing 21 days on, on one of your programs as well and see what that can do to reprograms our mind because this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. We do things like Ho'oponopono every night when we go to sleep. We're always trying to reprogram our mind. So, so we're going to be spending 21 days with you, so to speak, good. listening and listening and reprogram, and we can only see good that comes out of it. Good. Uh, on that note, where can people go to find out more and to find all of your recordings? Well, they can go to my website, which is just my name. It's stevegjones.com, G as in Gregory. So stevegjones.com. The great news is I've got a free recording for you there about building wealth. Awesome, awesome, awesome. If you didn't catch that, if you're driving down the road, come on over to inspirenationshow.com and we'll get you over to Steve G. Jones as well. Two last questions. We'll jump into a meditation. First off, what brings you the greatest happiness or what I call the woohoo? <laughs> I love it. Well, really for me, it's it's helping people. You know, if, if I can if I can shed some light where there was darkness. I, I used to be a I was a preacher for five years actually, from ninety to ninety five. So I still tend to talk awesome. in these terms. Yeah. So if I if I can enlighten someone and show them the possibilities that they have in their own lives, uh, you know, for me that's what that's what really drives me. Again, I believe as humans, we're social creatures. Um, we benefit when the group benefits. So any way I can benefit the group and help them move to the next level, that that's what really gets me excited. Very, very cool. Any last words of wisdom you want to share with people today? Well, I like to, to share this with people. It's a quote from the musical group America, and it says, Oz never did give nothing to the Tin Man that he didn't, didn't already have. And so, of course, it's talking about the Wizard of Oz giving something to the Tin Man and everyone else uh, that they already had, but it was a physical, symbolic representation of that. So hypnosis kind of, is kind of like that. 
I'm not giving you anything in my hypnosis recordings that you don't already have. I'm just reminding you of the power, the beauty, and the awesomeness that you already have. And sometimes that's all we need is a reminder. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Steve. Did you have a, a short hypnosis you wouldn't mind sharing with us? As long as you're not driving your car, listen to it later. I like it. I like it. Uh, yeah, don't 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 listen to this. The rest of this while you're doing anything that requires you to you know walk around or move around. Only listen to this. Rest of this, if you're sitting down or lying down, it won't be disturbed. And I'd be glad to do that. All I need is how how long you'd like it to be, and I need a topic. Let's say five to ten minutes, more or less. And uh, uh, topic today: positivity. Sounds great. All right, let's do it. So before we, uh, before we clear for takeoff, a few more housekeeping tips. Um, I want to make sure that if you're listening to this, again, you are only sitting or lying down. You're not operating a motor vehicle. You're not doing dishes. You're not vacuuming. You're not jogging. You're just sitting or lying down. And you're going to be closing your eyes, and you're going to be imagining some things. I'm only going to put positive thoughts in your mind, and it's only going to take five or ten minutes. Keep in mind, a normal hypnosis session is much longer. It's half an hour to an hour long. So I'm going to give you a condensed hors d'oeuvre uh, type session. I'm going to give you a little sample of hypnosis. You may be aware of everything I say during the session. That's fine. Don't worry about that. That's absolutely normal. Okay, so on that note, Michael, you ready? I am. I'm going to sit back myself and, and join the ride, seatbelt in, eyes closed. I like it. Tray tables up. All right. Clear for takeoff. Okay. So what I'd like you to do, everyone listening to this, what I'd like you to do is to take a deep breath in through your nose, inhaling slowly, hold it, open your mouth slightly and exhale slowly. Good. And then another deep breath in through your nose when you're ready, inhaling deeply, holding it and open your mouth slightly, exhaling very slowly. Good. And then continue breathing easily, effortlessly, and comfortably, realizing that in just a few moments, you are going to be completely relaxed. Now, in order to help you relax, I'd like you to imagine yourself on a beautiful island. This is your island. You are alone and safe and protected. You are very relaxed as you walk on the sand and feel that warm sand on the bottom of your feet. Feel the breeze blowing on your body. In fact, between the gentle breeze and the sun, the temperature is just right. And you can hear a few birds in the distance. You can see a few white, wispy clouds in the sky. And you can smell that unmistakable, salty air. I'd like you to slowly walk down toward the edge of the water just relaxing as you go, unwinding. That's right. And when you reach the edge of the water, I'd like you to take a few steps back to a safe, dry, comfortable spot where you're going to sit down and you're going to watch the sunset because it is the end of a beautiful day. And as you sit down, you find yourself relaxing from head to toe in the relaxation starts in the top of your head. It's as if you bring a ray of sun in through the top of your head and relaxes your head, moves down to your shoulders, through your body, relaxing your shoulders. So as you sit watching the water, you relax. The relaxation from the sun moves down your arms now to the tips of each and every one of your fingers, allowing you to relax even more now. The warmth of the sun moves down your body, down to your abdominal area, down to your hips, down to your legs, all the way down to the tips of your toes, relaxing you as it goes. And in just a few moments, you're going to watch the sun set. Again, it is the end of a beautiful day on your private island, on your private beach. You're going to watch the sun set over the water. 
And as the sun sets, I'm going to count backwards from 10 to 1, so that by the time I reach that final number of 1, you will be completely relaxed and at ease, and the sun will have set completely on the horizon. Starting with the number 10, the sun begins to set slowly on the horizon. 9, the sun sinks lower and lower as you relax more and more deeply now. Eight, down, down goes the sun as you relax more and more deeply. Seven, so very, very relaxed as the sun sinks lower and you enjoy being on the beach, just sitting and relaxing. Seven becomes six and then five as you relax and the sun sinks lower and lower. Four, three, down, down, relaxing more and more deeply. Two, at the count of the next number, the sun will have set completely on the horizon and you will be completely relaxed. All right now, one, the sun has set completely and you are completely at ease. And because you are so relaxed and at ease, your mind is open to positive productive, powerful suggestions that will help you. I'd like you to imagine now that you are standing up, standing up at the edge of the water. The sun has set, but there's still a little glow from the sun. And I want you to realize that you have a backpack on your back. You're wearing a backpack. And in this backpack are things that have slowed you down, slowed you down in the past. These are negative things that you have said to yourself or that others have said to you. This backpack is full of those things, negative words you have used to describe yourself, negative thoughts that people have given you, limiting ideas, limiting beliefs that you have taken on that you thought were your own, but they were simply ideas. And they're all in that backpack now. I'd like you to imagine taking that backpack off of your shoulders one strap at a time, first the left strap, then the right strap, letting that backpack fall to the ground, fall to the sandy beach. This is just your imagination, so if you'd like to, you can imagine throwing that backpack into the water. Remember, it's just your imagination. Throwing it, it's being taken out, taken out to sea, gone from your existence. All of those negative thoughts, all of those negative ideas, as now you imagine yourself lifting up, rising over your body, and moving into the future. You imagine yourself moving forward a little bit into the future, just a few feet, but actually you're moving six months from now into the future. And as you set down six months in the future, you take a look around and you see yourself six months from now in the future. Things have changed. You have started believing in yourself. You are a very positive person now. And you look back over the past six months and you see all of the changes that you have made. You see how letting go of your limiting beliefs has given you the freedom to pursue your goals, to start living a bigger and better life. It's bigger and better because it's more of what you want. It's more in line with your core identity who you are and who you want to become. You notice that you've surrounded yourself with positive people. It's very rare now that you associate with anyone who's negative because you have changed. You gravitate toward positive people and they gravitate toward you. They see the positivity that you have and they want to be around that. Likewise, you see that in them and you want to be around them. This has completely changed your life. You are now living a very positive, powerful life, going for it, going for your goals. And as you look ahead from here into the future, you see unlimited possibility because this is just going to get better and better for you. 
And I'd like you now to feel these positive feelings to a level 10, really crank them up, really see and smell and, and feel how good it feels to be here in this moment, six months in the future and be positive. I'd like you to make the okay sign with your right hand now, touching the tip of your right index finger to the tip of your right thumb. And as you make the okay sign with your right hand, I'd like you to think the word positivity in your mind. And you can let go of that okay sign now and realize that any time that you doubt yourself, all you have to do is make that okay sign with your right hand, think the word positivity, and you will be put back into this place in your mind where you are standing in possibility, where you are believing in yourself and understanding it's going to work out and understanding that you should go for it. And coming back now to the present, I'd like you to settle back in your body in the present. Imagine yourself back where you are and you bring with you all of that power. Realize that anytime you feel doubt, all you have to do is make the okay sign with your right hand, think the word positivity, and you're able to push through whatever you're working on. And tonight, before you go to sleep, you will take one action that you've been putting off, something that's good for you and all of those around you, something that shows that you've changed and that you believe in yourself now and that you go for your goals. You believe in yourself, you play full out, so you take one step tonight before you go to bed. Maybe it's a phone call you've been putting off that will help you. Maybe it's an email you've been meaning to send. Maybe it's someone you need to reach out to. Something that's going to help you achieve your goals because you believe in yourself now. So you take that step before you go to sleep tonight. And in just a few moments, you're going to return to full awakening consciousness. And when you do, you'll be wide awake, full of natural energy and ready to live the life as the new you. All right, coming up very slowly now. One, coming up feeling very good. Two, beginning to move now, beginning to stir, becoming more aware of where you are, more aware of your surroundings. At the count of the next number, you will be wide awake and completely out of hypnosis. All right now, three, eyes open, wide awake, and completely out of hypnosis. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Steve. This has been so much fun, and I think a powerful tool. I use a lot of tools in, in my arsenal over many, many, I guess, decades worth of work at this point. But honestly, until having you on the show, I hadn't thought of how important it is to go grab, ask for help when you need it, and grab some hypnosis and grab some, some help from a professional like you or your products, and, and I'm gonna be sifting through your, um, hopefully I can get my way through all 9,000, but at least the top ones, <laughs> because I think we, we all have blocks in our lives, and we all have spots that, that we know we're working on, we're working on, we're working on, we're working on, and so if we can find a way to leapfrog past it, so to speak, why the heck not? Absolutely. Any advantage that you can get that doesn't hurt others, I think is an advantage that should be used. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being on the show then. For everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well. You can see I'm sick and I'm energized now. Be well, have fun, get hypnosis when you need it, and shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you so much. My pleasure. You are listening to an interview with clinical hypnotherapist, Dr. Steve G. Jones. For a free hypnosis download, please visit stevegjones.com.